Hello fashion researchers. Uh, your research project about fashion is going to give you a chance to take everything you've learned about research and kind of apply it in a way that's most comfortable for you. Okay, so in this video um, we're just going to focus on reviewing a few things that you've learned this year and then kind of tailoring it to fashion and thinking about how you can make your own choices for your research project. Okay, so um, I recommend using Google Docs, although you don't necessarily have to, um, but remember that'll make it accessible from home. Go ahead and create a document, and you can title it with your last name and your decade. Uh, Ms. Bowers just got one class of fashion, so you don't need your class period. You can share it with uh, Ms. Bauer, and just by the way, you are welcome to ask Ms. Bauer to pause the video at any point, but I'm just going to keep barreling through here. Um, so now that you've got a place to store your information about fashion, um, let's think about research questions. Remember we've talked about how it's important to have a question to guide your search or questions rather than simply, I'm researching the 30s. Uh, for this research, Ms. Bauer's given you some questions. What are the clothing styles of the decade? Who are the influential people during this decade? And what events influenced the styles during this decade? Go ahead and write those in your own notes. Um, but even though she's giving you questions, you really do always want to personalize your research. So go ahead and write some I wonder statements. Um, let's, eh, let's call this, um, you know, even let's pretend Downton Abbey was in the 30s. Like, I wonder how realistic is Downton Abbey in terms of fashion. I wonder how the Depression influenced style. Downton Abbey is a TV show. So go ahead and write a few of your own I wonder statements. Okay, so now that you've kind of personalized it, um, let's think about how you plan to take your notes. Um, remember, we've looked at different kinds of formats for your notes. You've looked at um, using the two-column format in science, where you had findings on one side and your thinking on the other. Um, you've had um, a chance to try out taking notes in PowerPoint where you put your facts down here at the bottom and you're thinking up here maybe at the end of each section or day when you take notes. Um, I think in some classes um, I showed people that I just generally take notes as in bullet notes where I would put my details here and then maybe um, like tab in and say here are, are my thoughts. And put your reflections there. Um, or if you come up with another note-taking format, that is awesome as well. Um, so the format really doesn't matter, but remember there's really three main things you want to have in your notes. You want details from your sources, you know, the facts you're finding. Um, and remember, you want to paraphrase and summarize most of the time. Um, it really, your notes should really sound like you all the time, except when you are using those money quotes, you know, where, where it's like, wow, that's a really well said statement, I couldn't do it any better, there's something about that language that I want to capture. Um, then you want to make sure to use quotation marks so you remember it's a quote. But just don't go quoting a bunch of factual stuff, just put that in your own words. If you have trouble putting in your own words, talk it out to somebody next to you. Okay. Um, so in your notes, you're going to have details from your sources. That's kind of the obvious one. You need to have some kind of note so you remember, you either put a full citation in there or you just some way to remember what source it came from. Maybe you could link it. Um, and then you want to have your thinking or questions in there. And maybe that's something you'll do at the end of each period or every once in a while as you're thinking of it. That's kind of up to you. Okay, um, so now you're ready to start finding sources. And one thing we're going to add this time around is that we have some ebooks that will be useful for you as well. Okay, so you go to the vault. Remember, you can get there from the uh, Northview page and then Media Center and Vault. And he, there are two options um, for ebooks here. The first one is this Mac and Via. And if you click on it, you'll need to. Um, locate Northview Middle School, Ankeny, Iowa. And we're actually going to use the um, the same old AEA, the 0261 NVMS and the HAEA11 for the password. And you'll click Go. And the first three that come up actually are the decades ones that um, the AEA has purchased. Unfortunately, we don't have everything. You have the 80s and 90s, the 50s and 60s and the 20s and 30s. I don't know what happened in the 40s, but um, these are things that you can use. And you just would click Read Now. 
and you can kind of skip to different sections. Um, and these are particularly all about fashion. So it's really going to be a great resource for you. Um, sorry, 40s people, you don't have this one. Um, and then if you go back to um, the, uh, oh wait, I was going to mention, there's citation information right here. And you can pick MLA formatting and you can just copy that whole little thing. You do not need the bottom part. You do not, you only need up to the year. You don't need the, um, the whatever that URL in the ISBN is. Okay, you just need to copy this and then you can go ahead and paste that into your notes um, if you are going to use something from there. And you'll want to note the page number if there is a page number listed. I'm actually not sure. Oh yeah, these are, they do have page numbers listed. So you'll want to use those page numbers. Um, so that's the Mackin ones. Um, and then remember there are two kinds of ebooks. We also have the Gale ebooks. And those, they've set up a page for us here. And what you're going to want to look at is the American Decades. And I think we've got some of these in, in print book format as well. Um, and you are going to um, need to enter um, a password here. And it's just Ankeny, um, all small letters. And you'll click Login. And you see right over here, you can choose the volume. Um, let's see, I was let's say I was in the 30s. And you see that they have different sections um, on fashion. Remember, lifestyles and social trends. You may need to use different ones of these. Um, selected world events, okay? Um, so there's a lot of great stuff here as well, okay? So um, just like in the other, um, the other ebooks, the citations are here as well. Um, here, if you were to going to you wanting to cite the whole section of fashion, um, you would use this citation, but I think you can get it even more specific for like topics in the news, um, um, American fashions, and when it brings that up, you can get that specific. Um, yeah, at the very bottom. So use the citation from the page that you get it from because um, that's going to be just as specific as possible. These do not have page numbers listed, so I think to use the citation from the very specific page is going to be pretty useful. So for the Gale resources, you'll want to make sure in your notes that you copy the citation or write down the page like American Fashions um, in your notes. Um, so that you remember which of these pages it came from. Okay, um, so those are the ebooks and the um, how you would cite them from there. And um, now you're just ready to go and start um, start reading and um, copying some quotes down and putting things in your own words in your notes. And um, if you need any other refreshers. Remember that there are lots of video tutorials on the vault if you click on video tutorials. And um, for example, you might particularly want to look at the, um, the tutorial about taking notes if you want a more in-depth look at that. Um, if you want to look at the EasyBib refresher, that might be helpful. Remember when you're doing EasyBib, um, for books, if you're using the books in class, um, you'll want to put the ISBN in. Um, the, and that's the tiny little number on the back of your book, probably near the barcode. Um, and you'll want to check, you know, which one of these you're using. So if you want some help with citations, go ahead and look at the EasyBib refresher or perhaps the manual citations and all 59 options of sources. If your source doesn't come up automatically or um, you know it's not one of these um, most common types of sources, you may need to watch this tutorial. Um, but that's, that's that. Here's a work cited. What should it look like? Remember you've got all of these here for you. And um, I wish you well with your research. I think you guys will be in good shape. All right, happy researching.